Hey everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to another video. Now, Humankind is a brand new game coming this year from the developers at Amplitude Games. Why is this important? Well, lots of people are saying this game shares big resemblances with Civilization VI and I've seen a number of big Civ VI YouTubers playing the game. All of this has led me to this point. The first in a two-part series looking at what humankind does and does not have in common with Civilization VI. In the next week or so, we'll take a look at some of the cool stuff humankind does differently. Some of the stuff which is really exciting and which I'm sure Civ VI players can appreciate. But today we are going to look at some of the biggest similarities between both games and hopefully give you a taste as to whether Humankind is something you want to be keeping an eye on and something you will enjoy as a Civ player. Before we go any further, I want to make a couple of key notes. Firstly, these are just some of the key similarities between the two games, so I do encourage you to share any more similarities you think are noteworthy down in the comment section below. Maybe I'll pin a really good comment or I might feature them in the next video. We'll have to see exactly what is suggested. Secondly, Humankind is still in development, so there's lots we could still have to learn about this game, and there's still a lot of the things which could change from what's already been shown. So when it's released in April, some of these features could be a bit different, but I feel like the core of what we're going to talk about today will be the same, and the game will have the same feel and basic mechanics to it, I think. So the first similarity I want to mention is that Humankind and Civilization VI are very similar at their core. Just as with Civ, Humankind is a turn-based strategy game which sees players progress through time, beginning with the very start of humanity, and progressing through the ages to include the addition of new cultures and new weapons. I'm sure for people that have played Civ and progressed through all the eras, this will be very familiar. Essentially, turn by turn, you will take a journey through time with your people and watch the world around you and technologies available to you advance. I can't stress enough that it's these turn-based mechanics and the progression through time which will likely make the experience humankind offers kind of appealing at the very least to most Civ players. The next thing I want to talk about is cultures, which is kind of weird because in one sense... Cultures are one of the biggest differences between these two games. You have multiple cultures throughout your civilization in humankind. You can pick to be the Babylonians in one era and a different civilization in another. So in that sense, they are that is one of the biggest differences and I will talk a lot more about that in the second half of this series. However, for this video we're looking at similarities and to look at how cultures work in a similar way to Civ VI in some essences, it's important that we acknowledge that both games represent historical peoples and draw on their history in a relatively similar way, even if they operate slightly different in both games. Every Civ player knows that a civilization has lots of unique parts. Let's take Babylon, a recent addition in the New Frontiers Pass, as an example. In Civilization VI, Babylon has a unique Civ ability, which gives them a major advantage in the tech race, a unique melee unit taken right out of their history, and a unique building inspired from their history too. Every Civ in Civ VI is inspired by that people's history, and we see that in every single Civ, which is how they make them civilization so unique and offer such a different gameplay experience. Now, if we move on to Humankind, Humankind uses these civilizations in a very similar way. So, for example, in Humankind, the Babylonian culture in the game also gives a science bonus with a unique building and a unique unit inspired by the people's history too. So just by looking at how Babylon appears in Civ and in Humankind, you can see there's quite the similarities between how peoples and empires are represented in both of these games. The next thing I want to mention is that a key element to Humankind is building up your influence, your cities and expanding your territory in a map which starts with pretty much everything up for grabs and pretty much like a blank sheet of just territory and land where you can build things on. Though the mechanics by which you do such things are slightly different in Humankind compared to Civ, the basics are incredibly similar. You'll be building up your cities from scratch with exciting buildings and features from across history, and you'll probably end up fighting with your neighbours over territory that both parties won't control over. All of this is familiar to us Civ players, and therefore cities and territorial expansion and walls all of which appear in Humankind, are big similarities between both games. 
Similar to how districts work in Civ 6, the way to improve yields in humankind requires players to build what are known as quarters. These quarters seem to improve the tile yields in a specific area. For example, farm quarters improves the food yields, trade quarters improves the production yields, and campus quarters improve science shields. Another similarity when it comes to these quarters and districts as they are in Civ 6 is that different terrain types are more suitable for different quarters. Obviously in Civ 6 you can get adjacency bonuses for where you build your districts but in Humankind different terrain also gives bonuses to the quarters mechanics. The fifth and final point I want to make is that Humankind has a lot of of other similarities and mechanics which sort of overlap with Civilization VI as well. So although they work differently than they do in Civ VI, Humankind includes features such as World Wonders, and which includes the pyramids, Natural Wonders, City States and a Religion mechanic plus lots lots more. These are all things which play some role in Civilization VI and are also included in Humankind. Yes, they work differently. Yes, some of them have a bigger influence in Civ VI than they do in Humankind. But the core idea of having natural wonders in the game, having real life wonders in the game, does overlap with both of these things. So I'm sure that if you're interested in trying this stuff out in Civ VI, you'll probably be interested in trying this stuff out in Humankind. So there are some of the similarities between both games. Believe me that just because they're a similarity does not mean they are exactly the same. In fact, I'd say for the vast bulk of the similarities, they work quite differently than they do in Civ 6 and offer a bit of a different experience. In the next episode, we will go over lots of the cool big differences, including the battle mechanic. That for me is a big standout point for where this game differs from Civ 6. So I'm excited to talk about all of that. If you don't want to miss that video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to see another one of our Civilization 6 videos, then check out the video in the box on screen now. Also, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment if you have something to add to the discussion. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex, and I will see you in another video soon.